Welcome to Scott Alexander Art. Thank you for joining me. In this video I'm going to show you the technique of glazing and how I used it to finish this pet portrait commission. So first the colours that I'll be using. So that's burnt sienna and we've got uh, French ultramarine blue, permanent rose and we've got some titanium white Naples yellow, that's a really nice colour that one. Uh, Cadmium yellow light as well going on there. Okay. Oh yeah, that's just the linseed oil that I have to hand. So I begin there by mixing a little bit of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue together just to create a darker, darker tone which I'll be applying to the darker areas of the portrait. The thing with glazing is, is the layer that you're putting on top is very, very thin. Um, so I'm using linseed oil as well, mixed into that mixture there. Uh, and as you can see, I'm just applying it to the darkest areas of the painting. And glazing is all about painting a thin, translucent layer over the top of the dried painting that you've been working on. And as you can see, it's just going to create a little bit more depth and a little bit more darkness to those areas that I want to really recede back. Now, if you look at the area just around the bow tie, for example, it, it could be left as it, as it is, but to, to, to give the illusion that it's coming out from the dog's fur, if I go in just with a little bit of this mixture and just paint very gradually over the edges there, you can start to see that it's, it's creating a little bit of depth to that area of the painting. Um, and as I say, it could be left as it is, but I think with a darker area underneath the bow tie, it just sort of, it sort of illuminates the fact that it is coming out more. Uh, and of course, those bits of fur are receding further back uh, into the painting. I've added a little bit of permanent rose to the original mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Um, because there's obviously a lot of red in the background of the painting, what I want to do is sort of unify the dog with the background. Um, so just adding a bit of red into that, um, into that original mixture is starting to create a bit, of, a bit of unity between the two, the dog and the background. And you can see actually it comes through really nicely, um, particularly over the back there and the back leg. As I'm working my way around the painting, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about making sure the layer that I'm, I'm, I'm applying is as thin, as thin as possible because I can always add a little bit more darkness to that area if I want to. Uh, I mean the thing is with glazing as well, as you go around, um, it's, it's going to be wet for a while if you're painting in oils, so you can always just wipe off um, a layer if you went too too dark or if you put too much red in, in this case, for this painting. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really nice process to go through because you can take a step back and think, right, have I done that too much or can I do a little bit more? And I think learning the process of glazing really helps you as a painter because you're looking always to to think about your areas of light and dark because that's essentially what makes a painting you're always thinking about your light source and where where is that coming in and if you can get the the disparity between light and dark just right then you can obviously really create this sense of of you're looking at a 3d object and it always comes down to light and darkness um, so when you're glazing you're looking to intensify those areas of, of dark or of light depending on which colour you're applying on top of the dried painting. I've just included the original picture before we started any glazing at all and it's, it's quite subtle but if you look around the areas of the bow tie and compare them um, you can see that it's, it's, it's a little bit darker around the edges, particularly around the neckline as well of the dog, and just below by where I'm painting now actually. Now if you compare those areas side by side you can see that it's already a little bit darker and I think it's given it a little bit more depth than it originally had. So 
I'm just making my way around the painting and if you look very carefully you can see that some of these lovely red burnt sienna tones are just being glazed over the top, just particularly the back leg there. Um, I just think it adds a nice sort of quality to the, uh, to the painting and it helps it sort of recede and, and settle into the background quite nicely really. So I'm just making my way around the painting now, just using some of that ultramarine burnt sienna mixture with a little bit of permanent rose mixed in because I'm always careful to think about the background colour creeping in there as well. Um, so I've just gone over the tops of the dog's head just again with that sort of shadow colour just to give the illusion that um, you're looking at fur and fur can be quite tricky to paint. Um, it's, it's, it's easy to to paint it as individual uh, little bits of hair but actually I tend to think of fur as more being in more clumps and thick strands so it's quite easy, much easier to manage um, in terms of how I paint it. So just working over the eye there just to get that balance between the, the dark side and the lighter side um, and you can see just glazing over the top very gently has, has helped push that left eye back a little bit as, as you're looking at the dog and it's and it's helping to lift off the other side the other eyeball uh, which of course is reflecting that little bit of light and that's what essentially makes glazing a, a really useful tool to to know about is that it, it does allow you to modify the values of the colors and, and the intensity of the color and it really allows you to modify that and tweak it to, to quite a fine a fine degree really So I've just added a bit more permanent rose to my, my glazing mixture. Uh, now if you look to see where I'm just about to paint now, where I'm glazing there, it's just modifying that colour underneath, which you can now see has, has gone to a lovely sort of reddy, orangey tone. And particularly this area now where I'm painting, just glazing over the top with a fine, you know, thin layer of paint, but it's just modifying that essentially what is Naples yellow and a little bit of white uh, colour underneath. And what this does is because I'm, I'm using a similar colour to what the background is, it's suggesting that unity between the dog's fur and the background and, and how the light is reacting to it. So I think glazing is a really, really good tool to have because these sorts of effects are, would be really difficult to achieve without, without glazing. And you'll be able to see here that I'm just going to go around the areas of the dog just with a bit more of that permanent rose, just glazing very, very thinly over the top of, of certain areas. And I think again it just helps balance the painting and it's just going to add and suggest how the, the light is reacting in the painting and how it's reacting against the dog, the dog's fur. And it's obviously going to be picked up in different places depending on where the light's falling on that fur. So again you can see just just how the little little bits of colour just, just modify what you're doing to, to quite a nice a nice degree and you can see the red will just come through will come through that nicely. Um, and in different lights, you know, the painting will react to different lights depending on where it's going to be in the home, for example, how much light's coming in or if it's an artificial light. So you can create some really, really nice optical effects with glazing. So glazing changes how light reacts to a painting. On a glazed painting, light passes through the thin layer of paint and bounces off the opaque layer beneath it. So what you're seeing is something that's really visually interesting. You're creating depth of colour. You're giving a richness to the painting because the colours are layered and are not just an opaque mixture. 
So essentially what you're seeing is layers of unmixed colour which light can pass through and that helps give the painting a depth and, and illumination as well. Many artists use this technique, Vermeer, Rembrandt, Turner, uh, just to name a few, and it's amazing what effects you can actually create. Um, you can warm and cool down areas of your painting, and you can modify blues, for example, with a thin layer of red to create a nice rich purple. Um, and, and really this relates to all, all kinds of combinations you can, you can achieve. Um, there's always ways to create colours, of course. You can mix the primary colours to make other secondary colours. Um, but with glazing, if you, if you apply one layer, it has to be dry first, and then you can apply that thin layer over the top. Um, and the thing is, it's just to, to try it yourself, just to explore, see what kind of optics you can create and, and interesting dynamics you can, you can create with your painting. Because um, you're always looking at trying to really optimise optimize the visual effect that you're, you're creating. And of course that always comes back to, as I said before, the light and dark. You know, if you can think about that when you're painting, then, then you're really onto, onto a winner because that's how, how good painting is, is done. It's, it's getting that balance between light and dark and glazing helps you achieve this. So there you can see I'm just applying a little bit of a highlight which is Naples yellow with a little bit of white into the mixture and it's essentially it's not quite glazing it's it's, it's a technique called scumbling uh, and that's just to apply a thin layer of semi opaque paint uh, which modifies the color underneath in this case it's just lightening up what I did previously um, and it's usually you usually apply a lighter color over a darker color when you're when you're scumbling just going to be working on the highlights now of, of the eye where the light's coming in. It's really important not to overdo this part um, because you want to create a sense of realism but, but going in too heavy with the white can actually make it seem quite unrealistic so it's just a very delicate touch of a highlight and, and you're done really um, but, but that can really enliven, enliven your, your portrait if you get that, get that right. Um, so just highlighting the nose here Again, the light's coming in obliquely from the dog's left-hand side, our right. Um, so that's that's why the, the, the top portion, top left of the, the, the portrait is, is lighter. Um, and again, it's really it's really subtle. It's, it's 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 quite hard to detect on the camera, but I'm just going over, again, lightly scumbling over the top uh, of the of the dog's face with a, with that the lightest light really, predominantly white here. Um, tiny bit of Naples yellow mixed in as well but I'm just thinking about those last sort of final highlights that will bring the dog out. I mean most of the work was done prior to making this video but it's just these little changes and nuances that you apply to your painting that will, 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 will elevate a, a, a good painting to a, a really really good painting. Now for these darker areas of the painting, I'm going in with another glaze, um, but I'm using the blue with the red just to create a nice nice purple colour. I could have gone much darker with a burnt umber and the ultramarine blue. That would have been very, very dark. Um, and what I'm, what I'm doing with this purple mixture is just carrying it into some of the areas of the dog. This will help create unity between the, the darker areas of the background uh, and, and the dog, it will help settle them both in together. Um, so you'll see a, a very sort of subtle purple nuance to the darker areas uh, of the dog as well. I'm just carrying that same purple mixture into those areas of the dog which are really quite dark. Um, and again, it'll just it'll just create something that's visually quite quite interesting. It's got a nice rich red uh, purple tone to it. Just to finish, then I'm just glazing over with that same purple mixture, uh, a little bit more burnt sienna mixed in, um, but it's just going over the background because what I want to do is create a an even uh, finish to the lighting of the background. So if I kind of unify in that last one colour you can see that it will just sort of unify the whole 
the whole painting. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful, just some of the ways that I use glazing to finish off this pet portrait. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.